okay now shows uh, now i will show some uh, demonstration so i will start scala using docker so by the way you can use any you don't need to use docker it's optional so you can install scala directly onto your system and use scala prompt uh, to do the exercise or write any editor to implement Scala programs. For my convenience, I use Docker and VI. So maybe you are not so familiar with those. So you can use any tool, that's fine. Um, so I use Docker, so I start my Docker email. I change to my working directory. That is right. So this is what I did my previous examples. Right. So I start Scala prompt and show the things. If you want, you can write. Uh, actually, you have to write the Scala programs, compile and upload to the JIT. But I just uh, demonstrate with the prompt. So uh, if I remind you what the simple Scala function, we can start with definition and then the function name. So we wrote a function called sum, you remember. And then we give input parameters, two integer values called x, y. And the return type we can give like that, but it is optional. So I can directly say like that. So you implement a function for sum. So then I can pass any two parameters. This function will add these two together. Right. Now uh, I will show you how to kind of like uh, uh, we we wrote a function. You remember. Uh, to convert centigrade to Fahrenheit, and also we wrote a function uh, to calculate the uh, volume of the sphere. So let's try uh, volume function if you interest. So maybe I write a volume function. Uh, 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 for that, actually, we require high value. Maybe I first of all create a variable called value equal pi. I take uh, math pi, right? So pi value is now designed to the variable called pi, right? I have that variable now defined. So now I define a function called volume. Take uh, radius as input. The, maybe I take the double input. So sometimes radius may be uh, radius may be a decimal number. So the equation is then four point zero divide three point zero multiply by multiply. Uh, multiply, uh, multiply. Oops. Why? Okay, I made a mistake. Double D O U B L D. So if I define return type double, I don't need to tell 4.0 like that. So I do 4.0 like that because then Scala knows return type should be double. So it automatically declare a function called volume, take R one input and output double. So volume, the function is ready. So I can call it like that, 4.5 radius, volume of space 381 point something like that. Let's say I want it in the two decimal places, so then I can use printf function if I want that, and give a formatted string, uh, and say I need only two 
decimal places. And then I give a uh, call volume, volume with square point, uh, radius 3.2. So you see it says 137.26. So that's how our volume functions look like. Now uh, in the lecture, I introduce a problem. So there I say, I want to solve, I want to calculate the running time. So where I am running in two separate speed. In the one easy speed, speed I run eight minutes per kilometer. I take eight minutes, uh, speed eight minutes per kilometer I take. And then the fast or tempo, I take seven minutes per kilometer. So, so I am asking the total time which want to reach my home, where I run two kilometers from easy, two kilometers, and then three kilometers from tempo, and then two kilometers from it again easy. So, in order to solve that problem, you understand we need two functions that is uh, easy and tempo. So I divide these two. You see, I take number of kilometers I run and return type is the time. Uh, eight into K. So then I define a function for tempo. Take a kilometer as input again. and return type is seven into a. Right, so if I run, so then my total running time is first two kilometers from easy, easy. Then the next three is tempo. MPO and then last two is easy. So my running time is then three minutes. So you see, I divided that problem into small set of problems and solved it. Then I had a problem discussed to calculate the total price, wholesale price of a book sale. So it, uh, uh, book price is 24 rupees 95 cents and 40% discount. And for 50 copies, three rupees per copy. It, it says actually rupees three for first 50 copy. And then uh, 75 cents for additional copies. Uh, so how do I code it? So first of all, I need to write a function to calculate the uh, book price. Uh, a book price, right? So then let's do that. Uh, a book price. So I have to enter or input number of books. And that is actually x into 24.95 per book. Right. So then I want a function to calculate discount that take uh, in, in uh, total price. If x is then total price, discount is then x multiplied 0.4 because that is 40% uh, discount. My discount is also fine. Now I need a function called shipping cost. Shipping cost. Uh, and it take a number of copies. Uh, first 50 copies, uh, three rupees. And the rest is basically 
75 for each so there are we need if condition you like understand i guess so if it is less than or equal 50 then the price is three rupees else price is three plus x minus 50 that is how many copies greater than 50 multiply 7 5 so that my functions look like let's check whether my shipping shipping cost function is works for 50 copies it should be three rupees less than 50 any copy likes let's say 49 so so uh, 49 it should should be three rupees if it is greater than 50 like 51 it should be three rupees plus 75 cents right correct so my three functions are ready so if i want to calculate the total shipping uh, price for 60 copies so it should be then price 60 copies plus shipping cost for 60 copies and minus discount. is come from the amount of book price so i price for 60 copy passes to the discount that take the discount one second uh, discount minus uh, shipping cost okay the what's happened here is i made a mistake which i calculate the discount function so let's go back to my discount function i define the amount as integer it should not no because uh, uh, input is the in, uh, total price of the book it is a double decimal value so I have to redefine my uh, discount function so with double right now I can execute this yes so that is the total cost it pass the book value and capture the total value book price and pass the discount get the discount and minus that from the book price and then add the shipping cost so that's how we can solve that problem. So then you might remember we had the problem of calculating the area of the disk. So we can write a function. Of this function, which you take a radius as a input. And it returns output that is phi r square. So we have already defined the value for phi. I think it is phi. Then I define multiply twice. And it is I define it as phi. Yes. So this is the uh, area of this. So let me pass value for area of this like uh, 3.4 okay, uh, okay i made a mistake when i define my function name area of this sorry my function name is area of this mm. 
so area office missing right so there is the I call the area of this so I get the answer so then in order to solve the area of ring problem you remember so we can reuse the function of area of this so I define the area of ring function area of ring take then two inputs maybe r1 as uh, outer radius and then r2 as a uh, inner radius so then area of ring is equal area of outer this minus inner this a r e a of inner this done so then i call area of ring with uh, maybe outer radius 4.5 inner radius 2.1 the area of ring is 49.76 so you see i reuse this area of this function to solve the problem of area of ring right then i had a, a problem called area of cylinder so this is a sub functions of area of this plus area of rectangle so then i in order to solve that i want a function called area of rectangle area of rectangle has to take uh, width and height height one and it returns x multiply by that is area of rectangle so then if i want to write a function for area of cylinder area of cylinder I need to give the radius and the height that is let's say half and the height edge that is equal uh, two times area of this given the radius r plus area of rectangle so that i need to give the width width is two by r then the height that is area of cylinder so if I want to calculate the area of the cylinder now with uh, 2.3 radius and 5.6 height, so I get the answer 114.16. So you see how easy to solve problems if you divide that into the small set of functions. All right. Then we had other interesting problem discussed in this class that is calculating the salary of a person. So salary, we, I, we said has two parts, that is normal wage and then OT. In order to calculate that, I will try two functions. 
on Colwich take uh, hours as a integer I you find that as an input and it is uh, his income is hours multiplied by 150 rupees per hour then I need to write a function called OP take uh, hours as an input and then his income OT income is H multiply 75 rupees power so that is his OT income uh, then I need to calculate the tax so I need the function in tax so we take the income as input as income is x as input so then is tax is income multiply point one is ten percent tax right so finally I want to calculate his take home salary so that I write a function called take home has two inputs h1 is his uh, normal working hours and h2 is his ot hours so that is equal to maybe i write before a function called income uh, before the take home income so that is h1 and h2 income is equal to a wage wage h1 plus uh, ot h2 that is his income part. so for example if he works uh, 24 normal hours and 10 ot hours his income is 4350 right now i finally write the function for take home which take uh, two inputs h1 as uh, is normal working hours and h2 is his uh, OT hours so his take home is basically his income that is i pass h1 and h2 minus tax in order to calculate tax i need to pass income back to the function h2 like this so this will calculate the income this calculate the income and pass the tax that returns the tax and i reduce tax from the income so i type take home I type the same hours, 24 normal hours, and then 10 working hours. Uh, is take home is 3950. So you see, its income is for same working hours 400, 4350, it reduced by the tax. That is three thousand nine hundred and fifty. It's a take home seller. Right. Similarly, we had very interesting problem to calculate the uh, profit of a theater. So let's say we want to write functions for that. So I write the first function that is my maybe uh, uh, cost functions sorry I first write a function there uh, to find it our number of attendees I define a function for attend uh, these so that is a kind of attendees is a function of uh, ticket price so let's say the integer is the ticket price. Uh, that ticket price, we, we remember we develop a function is a, uh, is if ticket price is 
increase or decrease based on the increase of decrease of attendees. So the base number of attendees is 120. It may plus and minus based on the ticket price. Base ticket price is 15. So I reduce 15 p. So then it becomes minus or plus based on the value. And then I by 20. So it's increased by 20 euro. So I define a function for attendees. Let me check my function is correct by giving 120. Sorry, the ticket price I give, uh, my ticket price I give kind of like uh, 50, the base price, then number of attendees 120. Then I give the ticket price 10, it should increase by uh, 20. Then if I reduce further five, it should be 160. So then if base price is 15, uh, sorry, base price is 15, it's 120. If I increase it to 20, you see it's become 20 attendees. If I further increase into 25, it become reduced by 20, that is 80 attendees and so my attendee function is correct. So then I write a function to calculate the revenue. Um, my revenue. Revenue, and then I pass again ticket price for this function. And then my revenue is totally a function of ticket price, that is P multiplied by attendance. Attendees, we can calculate using our attendee function. Like that, by giving P. So attendees function, after giving P return number of attendees, I multiply that by P get the, to get the revenue. So I can check the, uh, I can check whether my revenue function is correct. And I pass maybe number of attendee at the ticket price 15. So it's right. So then uh, 15 multiply 100. Uh, ticket price is 15. 15 multiply 120, 1800. Similarly, if I reduce to 10, it increase the revenue like that. It's worse. Right. Then I need a function to calculate the cost by giving the ticket price P. The cost is the cost has two parts. You remember it's a fixed cost, and the variable cost depend on the attendees. So it says variable cost is uh, it says uh, as you might remember we says. Uh, uh, three uh, uh, five hundred plus three rupees per attendee, right? So then I need to multiply three with attendees. Attendees I pass p. So that is the cost. So if uh, I on the cost function. So maybe at ticket price 15, so our cost is uh, 500 plus 3 multiply 15. Uh, 3 multiply 120, because now if ticket price is 15, number of attendees is 120. So 120 plus 360, three right? 360 plus 15, 860, that's fine, cost function is done. So then I want to implement a function profit. Profit. So profit function is uh, obviously uh, depend on the ticket price. By given the ticket price, I calculate the profit. Profit is equal revenue. Revenue FRSP minus. Cost. 
pasti pendaki. Jadi konsesi mesti pasti. Right. So this is my profit function. So then I can directly call profit functions. Maybe at each price. So I print. And perhaps I print uh, 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 profit profit at various ticket price starting from five. Then profit at uh, ten. Uh, like that. Let's see. Actually, ticket price is 15 is a negative value. Uh, 10, uh, I lost. If ticket price 10, I get 480 profit. So maybe I change to ticket price then uh, 15 and to 20. So I get 940 profit and 1200. Then I try to further increase my ticket price to maybe 25 and 30 rupees. So my profit is, you see, further increase, 1,120. Maybe I further increase my ticket price, see whether I can maximize the profit, like 35. Oh, sorry, I made a mistake, it should be 35. Uh, 35, uh, sorry, I further increase to 35 and 40. 40. So you see it get starting decrease now. 40 it get decrease like that. So you see we can uh, implement it. Uh, the functions, separate functions. Uh, for different different uh, small set of sub problems and then combine those sub problems together to get the final answer so that's why that's how we do functional programming based on those I will upload some assignments where you have to write a Scala program for that. So I demonstrated in the prompt, but uh, in the problems I am asking you to implement the programs, the programs uh, yourself. And then you can push those Scala programs to your repository. Reuse the same repository, you don't need to create new repositories. Create a repository and push all assignments goes to the same repository. But each time I publish the assignment, you submit the URL of your repository. So then I can check out those repository and see your changes, alterations, and nuances. Right? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.